Hello watch lovers and you know what time it is. Here we are again and joining me today we have Janilda. <laughs> Hi guys. Gavin. Hi Spence. They're always excited at my we're, intros because they think... never know what they're going to get. No, we're always like, oh my God. <laughs> Do you not think we should rewrite that opening for him? Definitely. Hello, watch lovers. You know what time it is. And it's in order. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get. Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody is well and enjoying the one week of summer we just had. Absolutely. Yeah. Janilda, do you know what today is? Monday. Today's, no. Today's my oh, birthday. Birthday. Yeah, we have Gavin's birthday today. I couldn't think of a better thing to do than spend my birthday evening with you with two us. and with everybody else. We've got to bring him a cake, Janilda. You yeah. are joking. No, I thought the no. one thing you'd remember no, was to bring me a cake. Don't worry. Wow. We'll take you out. We'll bring you in the office tomorrow. Yeah, Can't well, just bring you a cake. No. That would be we'll too obvious, to, wouldn't it? To we'll sing me happy birthday and bring me a cake. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, guys, good evening. Welcome. If you have any comments you'd like to make for this evening, as always, please do pop them in below. It's great to hang out with everybody on a Monday night. We're really enjoying it, aren't we, Janilda? Sure. Every, every single week, to be honest, I can't wait for this time. <laughs> to make. It's quite fun and we like to read all the comments. We then know what we've got ahead of the week, where yeah. everyone's... Absolutely. Yeah. It is a great way to start. Yeah, the week. We do enjoy it, don't yeah. we? Yeah. yeah. Um, right, I'm going to ask you, Janilda, what's on the wrist this week? Don't ask me. Janilda, what's on the wrist? <laughs> she forgot I'm, her watch, Gav. Be honest. Today. Janilda, Be honest. hit the button. Eh, wrong. Yeah. Janilda forgot God, to put a watch she on. She forgot her watch. <laughs> yes. What's yeah. on yours, guys? Well, this is my... Uh, it's yeah, my birthday the today. Hulk. The Hulk. And I've got my Hulk on. Look at you, Gav. I you know. change your Rolexes that's, now. That's, that's the, yeah, I know. Yeah, he's got a bit of a clip. <laughs> that's about the third on. time yeah. I've worn it. I've done really well. <laughs> Spencer, what's on your wrist today? Um, I'm still on six... I just love this watch. Um... Here, guys, I can show you here. As you know, I've had Hilda. This has been a little while for me now. Yeah. Camera's just there. James, can you put that up on screen? Uh, if you pop it down on the mat. And there you go. There we go. Go on, talk I've, been I've been wearing this quite a while. I just love this piece. I just can't find anything else I prefer to wear at the minute. Just the patina on it, the aging. 1974, it's wearing really well. Just love the watch. And you also get a lot of customers yeah. saying, a lot of people I say, like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we're going to talk about those a little bit later because I know you've bought a huge selection sure, with you this evening. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Janida, uh, Janilda, Janida. Janilda, how's the week been? Good, very busy. It's been um, always, I mean, different customers, different watches, but we're still strong on sports watches, guys. That's mm. all we... It does sound a little bit boring to say we're still strong on sports watches. But that's the yeah. truth. Yeah. That's the truth. That Every what's week going it on. is something. Yeah, absolutely. Anything new and different in? Um, don't mention the P words because we're going to talk about those later. <laughs> okay, I won't mention that. I don't want to put my foot in it with you. Yeah, Always. I know. Um, Anything interesting coming? That's a no. That's a no then. It's okay. just busy. I can't, I can't speak about no, those pieces. No, okay, fine. Yeah. Let's say hello to everybody. James says, hi, Spencer. If uh, I would like to buy, say, a Submariner... 14060M from you. Sure. Would it be serviced to a standard where it would be waterproof and keep good time? Cheers. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. And yeah. any issues with it whatsoever, you return it. But it wouldn't go out of our workshop without being tested and accurate and 100% accurate. What happens when a watch, I mean, I know what happens when a watch comes in. Perhaps tell everybody when a watch comes into you, how do you get it ready? Um, what after buying a piece yeah we buy things and all our watchmakers they check them over they look at the condition of the case the glass everything the watch will then be totally dismantled fully serviced all the case refinished if it's a used watch everything gets polished everything gets washed cleaned and the movement gets serviced all new seals then put back together it then is tested for about 72 hours yeah. and then if the watchmaker's not happy with it it will go on a further test so it'll be regulated and he'll want it being exacting within his parameters so i've seen the machine they put it on i mean i think actually i've done a video with andy where he puts it on the it's machine like an ecg yeah an ecg they can check how many seconds yeah. it's out yeah. per year or whatever sure. it's going to be well, what you have is when a watch is tested they test it button up button down so when it goes on the machine because it's rotating yeah it sometimes works differently how it is and you've also got the amplitude of a watch now new watches should be greater between sort of 240 and 280 amplitude and that's sort of the power of the engine yeah and if something is 
lower than that, yeah. it will then be that it needs service. Right. We okay. actually had an interesting one last week. I had a customer saying, have you got anything that is not polished? I want an explorer not polished. So depending on what the mm. customer wants, we can also uh, wait. We've actually, and, yeah. there's a few pieces here, may I point out. Yeah. On vintage, on older things, we tend to leave them as exactly. they are. Yeah. The thing is, if you polish and someone wants unpolished, you've got a problem. Whereas if it's not polished... You can always go and polish it. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Wow. Okay. Let's uh, let's have a look who else is. Um, I hope uh, James that answers your question. Jacob Kendall. Hello, Jacob. Hi, Evening Jacob. all. Kelvin O. Gav, it's my birthday today. Wow. Alos. Wow. Also, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. All the best boys are born on the twenty sixth of July. Um, PD. Good evening. Tim Blackford. Good evening. David stops. Spencer subs a stunner. You haven't taken it off for weeks yeah, now, have you? Exactly. Yeah. But the more comments I get, the more I can't take you the piece. Yeah. Keep it. Andrew Kaplan, how are you? Evening from sunny Brighton. Happy birthday, Gavin. Thank you oh, very yeah. much. Right, PD says, any of the new Patek Philippe 2021 in yet? Ladies Aquanauts or men's Aquanauts? Are the new 5267s really commanding 50k? And the new 5968 in navy, white gold, getting 180,000? I believe so. Might happen, yeah. 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 You believe? They're yeah. very strong, aren't yeah. they, Pateks? Yeah. Everyone wants, the minute they come out, people want them. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to talk about a couple later, Spence, because yeah. I know you've got a, yeah. you, we've got a little something to show a little bit later, but we'll get to that. Not just for the boys this time. Mm-hmm. Not just Something's for the boys. Different. Yeah. Here come the girls. Ian Nicholson. Good evening. Spencer, thank you for the cup, mouse map, pens and cloth I received on Thursday. I shall buy you a pint at the London <laughs> Walk Show. Lovely. If you know Spencer, and we know him well, <laughs> a pint will send him completely that'll, that'll under the table. That would be enough for two days. If, uh, that would be a pint of shandy as well. <laughs> Maybe a pint of lemonade you might get him. Um, uh, Gabion, uh, Gabion, Gabion Wall, good evening all. Please can we see the clasp on Spencer's watch? And is it original? Absolutely. All right, pop it down on the mouse mat, Spence. James, if you can just flick up the camera. Uh, That's what the camera. they call a noister lock. Yep. Okay, it's just to the right here. Okay, let's have a look at that. Talk us through that then. That's an oyster lock. Yeah. You might so need you, to move a second. So you have the oyster lock there and that will open up. You can see it on the camera there. So just shove it back. Yep. You're going the wrong way. There we go. There we go. And you've also got the diver extension. Right. So that means you can uh, you can extend it from there. Yeah. Oh, I can do that on mine. Well, that will come My out. Hole. Wow, that's gorgeous. On, there. on oh. yours is easier, actually. Yeah. Um, now, we had a very, very interesting week last week, didn't we, Spencer? Absolutely. I got a day off, didn't it? Well, it wasn't a day well, off. Well, it, it was wasn't a day off. Than a normal it wasn't day. a day off. If you would have seen our social media, uh, you would have seen uh, one of our friends, Paul Thorpe, uh, spent a day with us. But also, Spencer, there was someone else very, very special. We asked the viewers to guess someone, last week who it was. someone did, didn't they? Can you believe it? In the live comments, and this is almost unbelievable. If I, you know, Someone must have leaked it to the media. <laughs> someone must have leaked it because, let me tell you, um, we asked you to guess who was going to be our special guest. And a chap called Chops pipes up in the live comments, is it Gerald Ratner? He now, I have no idea how somebody of worked all out, the people. of all the people in all yeah. the world, that yeah. they worked out that Gerald Ratner. So, for those of you that don't know, and do pop in your comments if you do know who Gerald Ratner is, Gerald Ratner to Spencer is a bit of a legend. If you Google Gerald Ratner, you'll see that Gerald Ratner, some made 30 years ago, famous speech, made a very, very famous speech um, at the Institute of Directors at the 1991 Royal Albert Hall in front of 6,000 people. And what he basically did in the space of two sentences was destroy his company, Ratner's. <laughs> he made a comment saying that the watches they sold were basically crap. Uh, sorry, the jewellery they sold were crap. crap. Um, he said the canter was crap. And he co- commented about a prawn sandwich, comparing it to a pair of earrings, but said that the prawn sandwich will probably last, last longer, longer okay. than the earrings. And uh, basically, this chap, uh, Gerald, um, who, by the way, is the, is the loveliest man, he knocked off his share price valuation the next day, £500 million. Pounds. Yeah. Okay, F- 500 million. And basically, he then got fired from the company, which was something his father started. His father started the company and he found himself, uh, you know, out on his ear. Uh, by the way, if you know the history of uh, Ratner's, they also owned uh, H. H. Samuels. Samuels. They owned watches of Switzerland. 
yep. amongst other brands. So guys, he could have been the pe- one of the people serving us all Rolexes these days had he still had yeah. the company. And by the way, um, the company is still in existence. They never went bust. Uh, ultimately, when Gerald was ousted, right down. the share price collapsed and they ended up becoming Signet Group, which still owns uh, watches of Switzerland yeah. and, and, and all the big and high uh, street. Yeah. They own 50% actually. H. Samuels, also of, uh, um, Ratner's. Yeah. Well, Ratner's aren't around anymore. So no, but they? you had HM. Yeah. So what we thought we'd do is um, we're not going to show you the whole piece today because actually there's going to be a, a few little holidays coming up and we've stored up some footage. But let's give everybody a little taste of Spencer's day out with Gerald Ratner. I say it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. And I just thought we'd do a drive around. It's a beautiful sunny day. I've been privileged by a friend of mine to be given a lovely Rolls. Take us back in time and just um, enjoy the day. Well, it's lovely to be with you, Spencer, and I just had a look at your business, and what a fantastic business it Thank is. You. It always has been. Thank you. And uh, it just says that you know your trade, and that is what it's all about. There's so many people now that think, you know, you can make a quick buck on the internet, but you've slogged it for many sure. years, sure. and nobody knows the business better than you, and that's why you are unbelievably Thank successful. Thank you. Everybody always focuses on Ratners. It's a very small part of the group. We had two and a half thousand shops, including uh, what in the UK. This was. Well, a thousand in the US, uh, 1,500 in the UK, which consisted of H. Samuel, Watchers of Switzerland, which you would be sure. familiar with. Sure. Expensive. We were the biggest Rolex seller. Nobody ever thinks of Ratners as the biggest Rolex uh, sure. seller. Um, Ernest Jones, Leslie but Davis. Ernest Jones and Leslie, were they both Rolex as well back in that? Yes, we had uh, 125 Ro- uh, Ernest Jones shops there where we had 58 Rolex agencies, which they were always. And it, you know, if you had a Rolex agency, uh, it was like a, pr- a license to print money uh, because so many people wanted Rolex and couldn't get it. So they, you know, they they created this scarcity, which actually meant that it was very easy to sell Rolex. Also, what Rolex did, and expensive watches still do to this day, is they make you look like a really decent pucker jeweler. So if you have a Rolex in your watch window, you're more likely to get higher margin for a and diamond sell ring. Diamond. Right, and just before anybody jumps up and down, if you didn't hear at the beginning of the VT, that car does not belong to Spencer. <laughs> he wants me to make that really, really clear before I've everybody's got some very good friends. Spencer's got some very good friends and very nice clients, <laughs> and they lent him a Rolls Royce convertible. Now, Gerald was an absolute diamond that day, and he, yes. he's an absolute legend to you, isn't yeah. he? Absolutely. So all of that will be revealed in the video, which I think we're going to put out next Monday evening. Sure. Uh, we, we, we may do something live, but ultimately that's going to go. And there was another chap who, who joined us uh, on that day out uh, for certain parts of filming. Uh, he seems to be the most famous man on YouTube in the watch world at the moment. Um, let's welcome to the show this evening our good friend, Paul Thorpe. How are you doing, Paul? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. How are you doing? How are you, Paul? Happy- uh, good evening. Happy birthday, Gav. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for your present. Oh, did you get the uh, telegram from the Queen? I did indeed. <laughs> yes, I did indeed. Can, can I ask you a question, Gav? Did Spencer wrap up one of his mouse mats to give you? He, he no. wrapped up two and a cloth. <laughs> yeah, don't I'm very sorry. I'll tell you what, I think it's lucky because it's more than he got me for my yeah. birthday. Paul, I can't help but noticing you've got wired earphones in today. Yeah, I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> You're not taking any chances, are you? Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, no, I've, I've been actually been out today to try and resolve all the problems because I don't know what it was. But I'm, for the moment, I'm using wide, and that's that. Okay, back to basics. It's, there's nothing back wrong with that, basics. Paul. There's yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with that. How you been? You been okay? I've been good, mate. Yeah, I've been really good. I'm enjoying the weather out of my bikes. Do you, know, you see that buzzer there? Yeah. Can, every time Spencer talks like this, can you hear? <laughs> It'll be on all the time then, wouldn't it? I was going to say, it might be quicker to leave your hand on it. <laughs> and then, so, when he, yeah, go on. Um, Sorry. Sorry. Paul, yeah. Jacob wants to know, did Paul take the roller home? It's my car. Spencer borrowed it off me. Correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good one. We had a, now, we haven't told him, obviously, we've done some filming with you that day. And um, yeah. it was fantastic meeting Gerald, wasn't it? 
Oh, I mean, I think the guy was just one of the most interesting people I've ever met. The stories he had were just phenomenal. And, uh, you know, having having the chance to sort of sit and speak to him and have a bit of lunch, it was, uh, it was, it was, Really, really good experience. Yeah. It really was, wasn't it? I'm really, I'm yeah. really looking forward to everybody seeing that. And if if you don't know who who Gerald Ratner is, you know, do Google him um, and have a little look. I've I've made a little VT to be played next week, a, a full on, and it does give a little bit of a history. And um, yeah, somebody wrote up here. He lost 150 million pounds. It was it was significantly more than that. Um, and somebody wrote. Um, he was advised uh, to put that joke in the speech as it was boring. And you are absolutely right. Yeah, he, he did tell us. us. He told us that. But I think when we saw him, and I'm sure you'll agree, Paul, he's a lot funnier than he realises. He's actually yeah. very amusing. Like, yeah, he's got a very, a very dry sense yeah. of humour. Um, pretty much everything he says, you know, could make you grin. You know, he's, a, he's a very clever man. Like you say, I'm not even sure that he's aware that he's... He's funny. I didn't manage to tap him up for a few quid, but <laughs> and and to be fair, he has risen like the phoenix from the flames. He has risen again, hasn't he? Yeah. Uh, over yeah, the years, yeah. he he literally lost everything. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, you'll get to see that all next week. Paul, can we check what's on your wrist today, Cassio? What are you doing? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> zero. It's all the same yeah. as Janilda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice everything, one. <laughs> every, yeah, everything's back in the bank. I'm afraid today, mate. So, yeah. just Paul, can we just quickly um, just say, have you put the whole thing to bed now? Yes, everything's done cool. and dusted. Good. You know, yeah, I mean, look, look, you know, I'm not even really going to... No. It, we just move on. We've yeah. got a, can I just say, we've got an exciting... Uh, sorry for the plug. Yeah. But an sure. exciting new show this coming Thursday. Great. Live, the first in a new episode of Watch People's Watch, Watch Show. So that's going to be something that I hope Spencer can join me on and there's going to be some other special guests. So I want to move on, have a, you know... Fantastic. And just push on, all nice and positive. Tell us a little bit about the show. What are you going to be doing, Paul? Um, What's the I'm format? Really, yeah, I'm hoping to have um, at least four guests on, um, mainly professionals who are going to be able to give a lot of advice. They're going to have a lot of experience between them. Um, and really, I want to keep the show positive, upbeat, um, but high. when I say high class, I'm not really sure if that's the, the right term, but high spec. Right, okay. May, spec. Maybe you can help us with our questions from Instagram this week, Paul. Right, I'll try. Okay, let's get on with um, with question number one that's coming this week. These are for you, Janilda, as okay. well, for you, Paul, and for you, Spencer. Um, this comes from Cigar Enthusiast uh, 5. What budget should I have to get a decent vintage steel sports watch? Um, Do I go first? Go on, you go first. What do you think? As much as you can possibly spend. Yep. And do, and do the right research because, you know, if you do the right research... Obviously, the more money you can afford to spend or the more money you can put into it, the better watch you're going to buy. Um, I could talk for an hour on that subject, but the basics of it is, you know, use all your budget that you can, take your time, do your research, and make sure you buy the right watch. But if it's vintage as well, please make sure you buy it off someone that absolutely knows what they're doing. And if they got it wrong, you can take it back to them. Absolutely. And we're going to talk a bit more about yeah, vintages. Yeah, I think we've got some uh, yeah, we're options gonna, we're gonna, we're going to talk about to vintage show. in just a second. Spencer, what's your... I totally agree with what Paul said. It's all about condition, dial and everything have to be original. And that's the thing. You've got to know who you're buying it from and you've got to take the experience of the person. If you can get papers, but budgets, you know, as much as you can. And you've told us in the past, Spencer, that whilst it's lovely to have box and papers for, for vintage models, it's not always the case, is it? No. Because who, who kept long, them? Uh, well, when things are 40, 50 years old, even on this watch I'm wearing, which I haven't got papers for this, but as long, it must have the original dial. Would you not agree, Paul? All these yeah, things, I mean, look, the dial is where the money is. Yeah, the dial, well, the dial, the hands, etc. The problem is with a lot of older sports watches is they've been back to Rolex and Rolex have swapped the dials out for a service one. Now, it's not a disaster because the watch is still, you know, genuine. It's still an original Rolex part. It's still worth a lot of money, but it's not worth the same amount of money as if it had the original, original dialing, if that makes sense. So, you know, it, there's a big danger that you could be buying a vintage sports watch thinking that it's totally original from the day it was born when in fact it's had a dial change innocent an innocent process in itself but it does reflect badly on the price and the value so as i said you know research and 
make sure that the person you're buying from is, is gives you a guarantee of exactly what you're buying right down to the dial, the hands, everything, because otherwise you could catch a cold. Yeah. Um, all the questions tonight are, are, or should be based around sort of vintage. Um, let's go to question number two. Two people ask the same question in two different ways. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll go with Amic underscore four. At what age does a watch become vintage? Mm. Uh, an artisan asked, how old is a watch to be classified as a vintage? What, what makes a watch? How old does it have to be to be vintage? I did a video. Uh, sorry, was you addressing that to me? Yeah. Go on, Paul. You can go first. Yeah, I, I did actually did a video on that. There are kind of three or four different periods, aren't they? Really, but I mean, I keep forgetting what year we're in. Twenty twenty one. I suppose, you know, anything now for me, anything sort of in the eighties, uh, early eighties in particular, is like semi vintage. I think anything pre nineteen eighty, I start to class as vintage. Then you've got proper vintage which is you know pre-1960 and then you've got antique which is pre-1940 so there's there's, there's many different very for me probably they start it starts to apply in the 1980s i would say i don't know how spencer feels about yeah. that yeah go on spencer um paul i'd agree with i say anything pre-1990 so 1980 which is over 30 years now is vintage yeah. but real vintage sort of 50s, 60s, 70s, you won't really find much in the way of sports um, older than 50s, really. No. no. So can I ask you, Paul, Paul I'm going to ask you this question. Um, Janilda, I'm not ignoring you, I no. promise. <laughs> uh, Paul, um, something that's antique, and let's take, because I the only model I probably know, is a Rolex Prince, an old Rolex mm. Prince from, I don't know, 1920. Mm. Or the, why are they not £100,000? Why are they still relatively small money? It's a great question, and I think there's been a lot of value in the proper antique uh, Rolex for a long time. I think one day they'll see a renaissance. I think one day they will rise massively in price, but not unless the fashion changes because people want to buy wearables, and these watches really are by today's standards. You know, even if Janilda was to put a Rolex Prince on, yeah. she'd probably think it was too small and too light. Um, mm. So they really are very to some degree, I don't know if delicate's the right word, but they're, they're nowhere near as robust as today's modern versions. So who wears these watches? Well, generally, I would say it's probably people in their 50s and 60s and above. You know, That's basically wearing... me, you and Spencer, but I wouldn't exactly, wear one. Exactly, yeah. I wouldn't wear so, one. I mean, but no, but yeah, what I'm but saying is, Paul, with all, Spencer and Paul, with all yeah. the chat of people sort of saying, you buy it, you stick it in your safe, you worry about it later, stick what, why are we not all buying Rolex Prince's and sticking just, them in the safe? I mean, I've seen a few over the years, but I haven't seen a Prince for quite a while. I haven't been asked for a Prince. Um, they're just like, I think Paul, I totally agree with you. They're not wearable. A 5508, a 5512, like from the 50s, even if it hasn't got the right dial, it's like the first Submariner, the James Bond sub, no shoulder guards. They're interesting, and if someone wears them, they're cool. I don't think you get that with the Prince. With the old ones, okay. Darren Cookson writes in and says, Hi guys, with the market and brand in such demand, how is it possible that the vintage watch company in Burlington Arcade can permanently discounting Rolex? What, the vintage stuff? Yeah. I'm assuming that's what well, it says. Uh, that the no. vintage watch company in Burlington Arcade um, can, can be permanently discounting Rolex. What I'd say is they're not, they're not discounting. Their markup's huge and they're showing a discount off of a huge price. Right. But their prices are, I mean, Paul, I'm sure you've seen their stuff, huge money. You know, birthday watches from 66, 67, you know. Yeah. I think, I, think I, I, I want to be a little bit careful because to be fair, you know, look, they're in Burlington Arcade. You yeah. Know, you wouldn't want to pay the rent and the rates. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, they've got to make a profit. That's what they're in business for. Sure. Um, I used to deal with those guys. I always got on well with them. Yes, their prices are high, but so are their rent and their rates. The reason they can discount them, Gavin, is because, you know, the, 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 the demand for vintage watches, particularly vintage Rolex, is minuscule by comparison to the modern day. To the sports. Standards. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, you, you, can buy, you can buy a Rolex Prince. I can't remember the last time I bought one. I mean, I've had probably 20 or 30 over the years, but I think I paid five or six thousand, seven thousand yeah. pounds for an 18 karat gold one back in 2017, 16 or whatever. Right. 
if that was a modern day watch, it would be ten times that. Yeah, absolutely, Maybe ten times that. So we're going to come on to some uh, some vintage sports models in just a second. Let's just get through the last couple of questions. Pete Smith, eleven seventy six, uh, says, "Is the Rolex Oyster Quartz one seven triple O, so seventeen thousand, all still?" Worth investing in? Is it rare? I would say it's a one seven oyster quartz one seven zero one four. Well, it says oh, it says seven seventeen thousand spent, but I think uh, well, you, you may yeah. know better. I it's think just what came it's one seven zero one four in the steel and the one seven zero one three in the bimetal. Again, Paul, I'm sure you've seen these. They are hugely desirable now. Um, only thing is, if something happens to the movement, it's a bit like heart attack. They have to go back to Rolex. It costs a lot of money. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I think they're... Uh, sorry, Gavin. Yeah, carry I on. Think, you know, honestly, I was telling people years ago to buy Oyster Quartz because I knew, well, I felt they were going to be popular. But if you can find a really nice condition Oyster Quartz in still or still in gold and the, it's, the condition is right and the price is sensible, buy it because they don't make them anymore. Yeah. So... That's always they a good sign for, for a bit of appreciation. Uh, Aaron J. Barkley says, a 2004 Sea Dweller pre-ceramic. Do you think these watches will continue to go up in price? Janilda, do you want to answer that? Uh, absolutely, I would say so, yeah. Yeah, 2004 Sea Dweller pre-ceramic. But it's the same thing with Submariners pre-ceramic. They are popular and they're going to go up in prices, I'm sure. Right. Spencer, you've bought, a, I can't believe how many watches you've brought well, in today. I only, only bought a handful, <laughs> um, bought 10 pieces. So I bought Spencer to bring in some um, watches that he has sitting uh, in the vault. And these are all, um, these are all vintage. They're not vintage, no. They're, no, they're, um, are, we, are we calling them vintage? There's a few, most of them are vintage, and well, we'll talk about the years. I've actually put them in years here. This is 66, so this piece is older than me. So what I've asked Spencer and, for is... And Paul's, Paul's going to say here that it's worn a lot better than me, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've, we've asked Spencer to bring in some older watches that we think are good value. Um, Probably had less place, pieces re replaced. Yeah. <laughs> and James, if you can pop that up on the screen. Paul, you're going to have a bit of a delay to see this because you're probably watching it live. But um, yeah, you're, you're, you're get, you're, yeah. I know, but you'll get the hang of it. Um, James, if we can pop that up on the screen so we can see it. Okay. Tell everybody what this watch is, Spencer. So this here is a 5500. This is an Air King from 1966. That was the last time England won the World Cup. That was before, before I was watch. born. Paul, were yeah. you born then? 66? Yeah, Paul was. Yeah. Yeah, I was Paul was yeah. a teenager <laughs> then. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was just before I was born. I was born in 67. So this is a 66 Air King on and look, what they call a NATO strap. Right. Still got a very nice dial on that. Was that the original strap or did it originally come on? Like no, a steel that strap? would have probably come on a bracelet, but they are worn on these sort of NATO straps. Right. So talk me through this watch really quickly, Spence. Why should I consider buying this watch? Because this is a, a low barrier to entry, isn't it? Sure. With something like this, you're not going to have loads. As time goes on, they're disappearing. So if you've got one that's in good condition and you keep it in good condition, it's looked after over the years. It's going to get older and rarer. And with all my birthday money that I've got today, how much would this cost me? This would cost you three and a half thousand. So three thousand five hundred pounds. Not something I'd wear every day, but maybe something that might be worth yeah. sticking away. Yeah. And without question, as time goes on, would you not agree, Paul? That would be it worth it. Really, really, yeah, because they're wearable. That's the thing. They're still wearable. Yeah, Jacob says looks like a Bond NATO. Um, let's get the next one up, Spencer. What do we got next? Here we have a sixteen oh one. Okay, here we have um, a 1601, and that's 1967, so that watch is 54 years old. And again, you'd see not that much has changed. This has been refurbished. Um, that's got the American bracelet on that as well. If you show on the side... They're nice, um, the US clasps. Yep, and if you see the clasp on the back as well, that's the American, which always had different detailing. But if you go back to the front... How you know with these that they're slightly different? They've got what they, we call a stepped dial. So there's a step. See all the way around the edge? Yeah. You can see it sort of slants away. But this is what you have with the 1601. And again, that's probably a repainted dial. It's definitely not an original. It's an original dial that's been repainted. Yeah. And how much more birthday money do I need to buy this one? And that's £4,250. Janilda, you might have to lend me some money if we're <laughs> going to get this one. Um we're going to go all the way up in price now. 
Where are okay. we going to get to um, now, we're gonna, I'm going through the years, actually. This is a similar piece, yeah, very similar to that one, which is 4,450, and that's the same sort of piece. Oyster bracelet. Um, slight discolouring on the dial, and that's on the oyster bracelet. Any of these take your fancy, Paul? What, what, what do you think of these? I can't see them. Oh, you can't so see any of them? Oh, sorry. I can't see any of them. No, that's oh, fine. Trust me, they're all lovely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Paul, I'm going to have to come over to your place and get you a setup. So again, both those... Sort your screens out. Both those pieces have got the white gold bezel. Yeah. And then I bring another one here. This is a 1603. Kelvin O says, how do you spot an American bracelet? Um, how, do you spot, how do you spot it? Go on, Paul. Well, when you turn it over, for a start, Gab, if you open that clasp... Yeah. On the American it bracelet. Inside it, Rolex USA. One? There's a giveaway. Okay, so is that this one, Spencer? No, no, no this one. That. Okay. And then the clasp has like a bevel on each edge. Let's have a little and, look. And, and the crown often will overlap the the the, the, yeah, the, the front does. of the clip. Okay, so basically, what sense? Paul's saying is, if we can just get that up on the camera, James. Okay. James. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I can't. So you'll have two, two, two shiny bits down yeah. the edge. Yeah, I've got it. And, and the satin part in the middle, the crown yep. is. I mean, I can't see the watch, but the crown yep. is probably overlapping yeah. the tip of the clasp. Yeah. See yeah. Hand is. yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Just. Uh, just yeah. there. And then inside the clasp, it probably says, or almost certainly says, Rolex USA yeah. or USA. There we go. Okay, let's get those out of the way. Um, John Smith says, if I get my watch service via an independent watchmaker, will they be able to get original Rolex parts, even for watches that have discontinued? With difficulty. With difficulty. With difficulty. Depends if they're where well, they're not going to be Rolex accredited, but by, often the best watchmakers or some of the best watchmakers, um, they will have friends who have Rolex accounts. But Paul, with some of these older pieces, they can't even get certain parts. Oh do they? No. no, 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 no. If it's vintage, then it's going to They've be. They've got. Part. They make the parts. Some of the really yeah. high end will well, in make fact, parts. So we know. I, I'm not sure if you know. I won't name them because I haven't asked their permission. But I know two people. One a dial restorer. Yep. And one um, a watchmaker who, who Rolex will employ, will outsource. So if someone wants a special dial refinished, I'm sure you know it is Spencer. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they do the do the work for Rolex. They do the work for them, yeah. But even so, you still know when a dial's been repainted because it's oh, too yeah. Yeah. it's too fresh. Yeah, it's too fresh. David Stops says, "Vintage Sub or Vintage GMT," which is a very nice intro into our next set of watches, Spencer. Um, let's get yeah, let's get one of each out. Sure. It's it's yours. It's what? It's your sure, sure. I mean, they're both great. I personally love some of these old... What's this yeah. one, Spence? That's GMT. So this is a GMT. This is a Pepsi. What year is this? 1971. So that starts with a oh, 3 million... Oh, that was a year um, after I was born. Janilda. I know I don't look that beautiful. old. Thank you. Um, if you look here, see on all these older dials, you always know a more vintage watch is where the dots are sort of painted... Whereas when you move on to the newer watches, they always have metal or white gold or a surround in metal. Whereas these older pieces don't. You just have the luminous there. I mean, dare I say it, all of a sudden these old scratched up looking watches are actually looking quite... I'm properly suckered into that. How much is this one, Spence? Um, that's 11,900. Right, so Janil, do I need you to lend me a couple of quid? And Paul, I need you to lend me a couple of quid. <laughs> Okay. Hey, so what's the reference on that watch? Have you got that's, it there? That's a 1675, Paul. Now, how much were we paying for them, say, five, six years ago? Two, three thousand. Exactly. Two or three thousand, yeah. just yeah. a few years ago. Yeah. yeah. Three Under three grand. Wow. Uh, let's if, have a look. if they were three grand, they were expensive. They were expensive <laughs> and you wouldn't have bought them. Uh, let's have a look at another GMT alongside that. But here's another one, but the dial here... Sorry. Yeah, go on. Um, the dial on that one's been restored. So again, if you if you compare the two, you can see again there's there's something to be said on both, but sometimes when they're original they look really worn out 
and they can start flaking and you get the paint coming off the hands. But then when the hands are replaced, like the one on the right with the brighter bezel, they're not how people want them. I'll just tell you now, Spence, both these watches are broken. The time's wrong on both of them. Yeah, because they've just been sitting there. <laughs> oh, I am joking. Yeah. Um, and there, you can compare that to this sub yeah. that I'm wearing. Okay. That is mo that's moving there. So you can see the yellowing of that dial compared to the GMT. Yeah. So you can see what looks o better. And over the years, how they... Um, yeah. Yeah. I think uh, it was a beautiful dial, Spencer. You had a, do you remember the watch I looked at when I was over your place the other day? Well, when was that, Paul? Um, was it? Uh, I can't remember what it was now. Was it? I think was. Was it just a straightforward oyster perpetual? There was two of them. Yes. Yeah. What did you did you buy those watches? Yeah, we did. That's just yeah, that they're was, being checked that, over now. That yeah. doll, one of those dolls. Let me tell you guys, Spencer. So what was the model? Because I, I can't remember. I looked at so many. It was, was one of the earlier OPs. I really can't recollect, but yeah, I know. But it, what a doll on that. What a doll. Yeah. Uh, Jacob Beautiful. Kendall says the patina is amazing on a lot of those vintage pieces. Um, he yeah. says service hands too, question mark. Um, well, you, you can see... What is that? Can, what is service hands? Service mean? hands is where it's gone to Rolex, and Rolex have said the hands aren't in good condition. Please, can we? Would you like them changed? And most people who don't know they get them yes. changed. Yeah. But years ago, you could get them changed and ask for your original hands back. Right. Now Rolex won't do that. Oh. Do they, Paul? It's exchange well, it's, basis. It's work. Yeah, it's work. Works on an exchange basis, which is not really much of an exchange because what you're doing is you're paying for the privilege of having your watch devalued. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I heard mentioned in when I was uh, in, in the other day uh, dealing with Janilda and Kaylee, um, I heard the word flat four mentioned. Yes, and I said whatever that is, let's bring it on the mm -hmm. show tonight. So show me what is a flat four. Oh, here, let's let's here, take want... those out. Go on, take those three out. I'm not allowed to touch the watches anymore, Janilda. <laughs> have you noticed? Right, Definitely Paul. Not. That's three weeks on the trot. I've dropped a watch. <laughs> oh God! You should have seen his face last week. It was a picture. <laughs> So here we have a regular um, anniversary. Okay. So if you look at the four on this, so the four is pointed. See, it goes to a pit. See, at the top of the four, you can see that it goes to a point. So we're talking just the just on, on the, the bezel. bezel. Just which on the bezel. Which is just that. Yeah. 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 And this one, which is highly, highly sought after, is called the flat four. So let's put that alongside so if you it. put them next to each other. You can see the difference on the four. You see the flat four, so you've got like a straight line at the top. Can you see the two? Yeah. Okay, I'm an idiot. They both look the same to me. Yeah. Not, it's not the easiest thing in the world to spot. It isn't, is it? I mean, I've got terrible eyes and glasses right. on, and so I'm trying here, to look through a camera so screen. This is yeah. going to a point. At the, the bottom top. or the top? At, at the, the top. 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 Yeah. The top. Ah. Oh. It's like it's flat. Yes. If you look like the top of the zero, okay. the zero has got a flat line at the top. Right. The flat four has got a line similar to the zero. Yeah. Flat four was only a few years in early production, no? Correct. Jacob yep. Kendall, yep. our regular watch expert. Yep. So there, the, the newer piece is yep. 15,500. That's 15,500. And again, that's with the card, with and the credit card. How much is this one going to cost me? And the flat four is older. It's an 06 on a D serial with papers. Right, oh. Uh, actually, I think that's no five. I put this up on our Instagram the other day, I think, and Jacob Kendall offered to work for you again for a year for free <laughs> for the flat four. Isn't that right, Jacob? Um, and I think you'll find most of the flat fours always had papers and not credit card, because it was the earlier ones. Right, so that's got a paper. Yeah. yeah. And like Paul says, if you sent this back, Rolex would take your bezel and give you a regular one. That's why this cannot go back. So that was that a question that w when it went in because you wanted a service or do something to it and you can't basically you can't you can't and how much is this flat four well, going to cost me? Well, you can, but you can just say to them, please keep the original bezel. Yeah. And what has it ever happened that it came back replaced and done and you have some sort of padding? again if people if people don't know. If people yeah, don't do you know, know do you know on that bezel? Yeah. I think there was something like. Um, do you know what? I've got to the stage in my life now where I forget what I once remembered. Um, but I think there are 11 or 13 different versions of that bezel. Right. Wow. Jacob Over Kendall says, that's right, Gav, just get me a flat with some of your birthday money. 
Yeah. <laughs> Hold a second. How much is the flat for? The flat for is 18,000. 18 grand. So I need Janil de Paul. James, you, you're going to contribute <laughs> to this one? James will chip in. James will chip you, in. You wouldn't like my uh, interest rates, mate, I've got to tell you. Would I not? <laughs> wow. Okay. Swap it for some filming. Hey. Or headphones. Yeah. Oh, by the way, yeah. I need to renegotiate with you, Spencer. I saw what um, those boys in America are getting paid for filming. It was, uh, we're like cheap over here, aren't we? Oh, where he spoke. Oh, yeah, yeah. We weren't anyway, we'll go, we won't go into yeah. that, but I'll take yeah. that with you later. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Andrew Kaplan says, what's the reasoning behind the flat four? Is it a mistake? Um, often, a lot of the things that are expensive were mistakes or problems with the printing, but... I don't know. Paul, your thoughts on it's it? It's font, font change, isn't it? Yep. And that, that, that wasn't uncommon because it was probably a little bit more of a basic process back in the day. Yeah, like I said, there, I think there were between... I, I, I know, I, I do know what it is, but I can't remember if it's exactly 11 or 13 different variants. Wow, it's pretty amazing. What, what, what else is there? We've got flat four. What else can we pick off the top of our head? Get your right. beeper. We've now got here a 1982. <laughs> this is a nice piece. This is a 16800 from 82. And again, look at the dial on that, how it's just flat. So this is a 16800 from so this 1982. This is what's referred to as a matte dial. Okay. And you see no shine in it. Oh, yeah. Um, it's really, big uh, dots. Just really nice. Yeah. Again, the hands don't quite match, but that's not uncommon. But the dial's very nice. Oh, I can original. see because the, the hands are white. The hands. What's probably happened is the hands have decayed a bit and it's gone back and Rolex have changed the hands. Right. Okay. That's good. Ian Nicholson says, I absolutely love watching this show. I always learn something. Well, that's good news because so do I. Every week, week in, week out. And here is 5513. So this is what I was moving on to now. This is what real collectors don't like in a dial. If you see, there's little silver markers round all the numerals. Right. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah. So that's when you when you moved on to more modern things, and these are they're bordering on vintage. I mean, this is eighty six, but in collectible terms, you wouldn't necessarily that wouldn't be your first choice to put in a collection. Yeah, you'd they, sooner have the older dials. David stops asks, "Do you wear vintage watches in water?" As I long as not to personally, but again, um, I'd agree with you, Paul, because you could do a lot of damage unless they've been fully serviced and they're holding up waterproof. Would you not agree, Paul? If they are yeah, waterproof, yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, even some of the modern watches, mate. You know, look, people forget to do up crowns. Mm. You they, know, do you know there's there's two yeah. there's two problems with crowns that are actually gender specific, Gav. Right, one cool. is. The girls don't often do them up tight enough, and yeah. the fellas often do them up too tight. Right, which can lead to eventually can lead to um, a compromise. So, you know, whenever I do my crowns up, I do them up just to the point where finger tight, closed. finger tight. Yeah, yeah, give it one more little squeeze, and I'm happy. But some of the guys are like, like they're doing up a bowl. Yeah. yeah, some of the girls don't quite get it all the way down. So my advice to them: look, if it's an expensive watch. Yeah. Okay, and it's Can not. you just say that line again, please? Some of the girls don't what? <laughs> David I'm stops. Not, I'm not aware of what I said, so I won't retry. <laughs> don't watch it on repeat then. Janil, you can't watch it on repeat either. <laughs> David stops says, box and papers with the 16800. Um, no. 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 Okay. Box, warranty card from BQ, and a yep. two-year warranty. Are we? Have we gone through the whole rotation now? Um, you've seen the 86. Um, I've got one more. One here. more. This is an 80. Now, this is, again, Paul, this was the transitional. This is a 16, 8,000. So that's 168 with three zeros. Okay, 168 with three zeros. So what year is this? This was transitional in 87. I believe that wasn't made for long, was it? No. And these, It was made for a few years. So it was one of the first where you changed from the plexiglass to the mineral. On you the glass. I, I can't, I'd like to see that watch, but I can't see anything on the screen, unfortunately. Right. What's the dial like on it? Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. That's a good description, Spence. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's not a vintage dial. It's just um, a regular dial. A regular dial. But just going back to what you were saying, Paul, really, you're 100% right. 
if you've got a modern watch and you do get water damage, it can go back to Rolex, a service, three, four hundred pounds, you've got a new dial. If you've got something really vintage that you haven't screwed a button in and you get water damage, you could be paying thousands yeah, so and you might not get the dial. Worth. Yeah, so really, yeah. your advice there, the I would agree. Yeah, it's not worth the risk. It's really it's not, not worth the risk. You know, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you something, Spencer. Every year, I'll get a couple of mates that ring me up whilst they're in Ibiza or Barbados or wherever they are, and they'll go, Paul, just the man I need to speak to. I've got water in my watch, or there's, there's, there's mm. um, condensation in my watch after they've been swimming, and it's because either the crown's not been done up or there's been a compromise, the watch needs a service. And these watches sometimes are less than 20 years old. So I think anything that's less than 10 years old, as long as the crown's done, you know, you're fine. Go, go, yeah. you know, go and out. like you say, the biggest disaster is someone's away, water's got in, it's damaged, seawater, which is salt water, it yeah. just, it will destroy watches. Destroy and you can't watch. get it back to get it yeah. looked at. As... Can I just, whilst we're on that subject, yeah. if you don't mind, it's quite important. If I can just give people a bit of advice, if they do ever get water into their watch, the thing to do is to unscrew the crown fully. Yeah. Open it right up. Let the air in. Let the air in, lay it down so that the crown, the water can run out or the condensation right. can run out. Put it in an airing cupboard or put it on top of like a sock on a on a. Um, You're not going to say in rice, are you, Paul? Because I used to do that with an iPhone or back rice. in the day. <laughs> but what do you do when you get it, water in your iPhone? Put it in rice. Put it in. The, yeah. Get so, it dry as soon as possible, but leave that crown open. Yeah. And um, yeah, make sure that it uh, the air can get in. Fantastic. Um, John Smith says, "I bought my yellow gold two tone GMT in 2018." I'll put it in for a service in 10 years. Will Rolex be able to source original parts if they need changing? Yes. Sorry, what was the age of the piece? 2018. Yeah, yeah no yeah, problem. Yeah. Years. I think they guarantee parts now for 100 years. For 100 years. And Kelvin O says, John Smith, I'm sure Rolex keep parts for every new watch release for 30 or 35 years. Yeah. Um, John Smith says also, best watch insurance company for vintage watches? Um, it depends. On a lot of these, you, you can't get just insurance for a watch it needs to be part of your household right with this i mean we have got th march who we work with that we can recommend people to yeah but again going back to these you must not insure for cost yeah or what you paid because every year you've got to upgrade your valuations yep. things can be going up by crazy amounts and, and it must be for market value not replacement yeah. value and pete smith mentions your favorite bank in the whole world uh paul metro bank safety deposit box john keep them in your safety deposit box uh so r says great show gang watching uh re watching watches paul where can i buy some good rolex replica we won't answer that one will we <laughs> On the beach in Brighton. On the beach in Brighton. Um, oh, actually, Oxford Street. You could probably recommend Oxford Street now, couldn't you? Uh, along with some uh, Yeezys. Uh, Kelvin O, is a Rolex recoverable after it's been water damaged? Yeah. Is a Rolex watch recoverable? Is it recoverable? Yeah. Can it Absolutely. be fixed? Absolutely. Yeah. Honestly, look, listen, a Rolex watch is recoverable if it's been run over by a bus. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a new middle case. The... The bill will be through the roof, but it is yeah. recoverable. I tell, you, I, told you, I tell you, I told a story once about a watch that was bought into my shop or came into my possession, had been in a house fire. And um, something that melted, it was like a tarry sort of wax, had completely engulfed this watch. And after we cleaned it off enough, I could tell that it was a, a biometal sports watch. It was either a GMT or a Submariner. Um, I sent that off for a service. That's how bad it was. I couldn't even be sure because I couldn't yeah. get the, the debris off. Um, that watch came back to me looking like brand new. Wow. Craig Taylor says, happy birthday, Gav. I'm loving all the happy birthdays. <laughs> but do you know what? When is your birthday? Make sure we're doing a live show. <laughs> a big thank you from me for the coffee mug, mat and pens. No and worries. a big hello from Hereford. You can actually thank Janilda because Janilda makes sure that I everybody who requests that. all this stuff, she does, it, it all gets sent out. And I think actually David does as well, to be yeah. fair. So... Um, um, so that's that's all good news. Paul, did you take some mouse mats away? I did, mate. I've got about... you got a stash of about 3,000? Yeah. yeah. Send yeah, them on the beach. I can send you some yeah. more. Yeah. Um, hello, Robbie from... Uh, Robbie in the USA. Love the show. Right. Before we move on any further, um, 
we have Paul. You may I know you watch occasionally. We've been inviting some uh, some of our subscribers to basically come and join us. You're going to be part of this. You don't know it yet, but you're going to be part of this. <laughs> right. A bit like what you're doing on Thursday on your show. Um, we're going to have lunch on Spencer for a change, and we've invited some subscribers to come down. Um, some of the viewers to basically bring some of their watches down and basically have a, almost like a round table chat. Stick them all in the middle, and we're going to have a little chat about watches. Um, and That's we ask people to say why they deserve to have lunch with Spencer and you, okay? And 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 you're going to be there as well, Janelle. Sure. And and I'll be behind the cameras this time. Okay. So let's have a little listen, and, and maybe we can all decide um, who's going to get it. The lucky one. King's Trumper said. I'd love to say I would enjoy lunch with Spencer purely on my love of horology. But the truth is, <laughs> the truth is, I've just had my first child four months ago. To be able to have lunch without crying, food going everywhere, throwing up and smells of poo, and that's just the missus, would be lovely. Well, actually, there's no guarantee that won't happen anyway. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's King Strumper. We feel for him, yeah. though. Yeah. So. Andy Pandy says, lunch, ah, the chance to swap a pair of Rolex gloves for lunch with Spencer Seems fair to me. Okay. Um, and then he put a comment about the Hulk we were doing last week. So there you go. Okay. I think you're being swapped a, um, a pair of Rolex gloves for lunch with you. Watches without hoops says, I think Spencer should invite me to lunch because he hasn't yet, but I know it's only a matter of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul, well, boom. what I think we do is we will we'll invite four people to okay. join us. Well, we've got yeah. another two to read out okay. and then we can all decide. I'd like to think that the comb would prove to be the best investment piece, um, but I think... The, no, that was no... Oh, okay. Josie, I would like to join you for lunch because your channel fills me with enthusiasm and knowledge. I first started watching Paul Thorpe at the gym a year ago. I watched all of his videos in sequence, then I got into Spencer as a trusted dealer. I now have two watches in my collection and would love to share them and some stories with you. Okay, well, he's coming, definitely. Well, he's definitely coming. In fact, how many did you say, Spencer? Four? We take four. Right, we've so got then we've them. got King's Trumper, Andy Pandy, Watches Without Hoops, and uh, and John C. They're all coming for okay. lunch with you. So we'll yeah. put a date in, we'll email them and see what we can do. Or we've got to work. You better get on the phone at McDonald's, mate, and book No, your don't worry about like. that. I think, actually, because we went for the old round table, I think we're going to go for the Chinese next yeah, door. There's Chinese. We've got Tim's table. You up for Chinese, Paul? It's on Spencer. It, it wouldn't be my first choice, I've got to be honest. Yeah. I don't mind. As long as Spencer's paying, I'll leave. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. We love that. Um, Pete Smith says, Paul, have you replaced your new Harley Davidson yet? <laughs> no, not yet, no. Uh, no. Actually, I've got three bikes in the garage at the moment, and uh, I'm enjoying every one of them. So, no, not yet. It's been with me for a while now. I've had it three weeks. Give me a chance. <laughs> um, so are... He pipes up the comment that was going to be my next question, just going back to all these gorgeous watches. So R says, if you could only take one of the watches on the table, which would it be and why? And that was going to be my question. As an investment piece, um, I know they're all for sale, um, but what would be the one perhaps uh, you would pick out of that lot, Spencer? I would be taking one of the GMTs myself. You'd be taking a GMT as a, yeah. as a stick away yeah. in Paul's Metro yeah. Bank. But I just like the bezels. I like the bezel. It yeah. Sets it apart. And which one would you be taking? Probably the more worn looking. The more worn, which is a 1970... Uh, the, the 77 1675. A 19... Which is £13,000. Yep. Paul, what would be yours? Oh, you haven't seen he, them, he have He can't you? see no, them, to I be fair. I haven't seen anything, mate. No, I can't even remember what you've got on the desk now. Come on, <laughs> Sadly, I have to work here, Liz. Tonight, I've got to work on this. <laughs> oh, wow, that's amazing. Um, guys, thank you very much for all your comments this evening. Um, Paul... We're going to be showing um, some very special footage of you in the next couple of weeks. Did you have a fun day out, Spencer? I did. I really enjoyed it. It was absolutely fantastic. You took me to some uh, one or two nice places, and the car was lovely, and it was just a nice experience. And, you know, the only thing that spoiled it was Spencer had to be there. <laughs> I mean, to be that, fair. I mean, I, I don't want to give too much away, but it, it was <laughs> it was a great fun day, and we're going to give you um, some, some, some trailers and some footage and a few bits and pieces so you can much. share with your guys. Paul Oakley says, before we go, good evening, guys. Great show. What time are you guys attending the London Watch Show on Saturday? Thanks. I have my ticket. I will be there all day and all night. And all day and all night. So you ain't going to miss me. I'll be there. Spencer, I think you're going to be the same. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 All right, guys, we've got... Sunday's um, going to be difficult because after Saturday... Yeah, it's yeah, going to be... It's a, always it's the second day. day of a show. Yeah. Yeah. Boys, we've got a shout out to do. Kelvin O says, Gav, can you shout out to my sons, Henry and Chester, age seven and five? 
Hello, Henry. Hello, Chester. How are you doing? What watches? Henry and we... Chester. Henry and Chester. <laughs> what watches do you want your daddy to buy from Spencer? <laughs> um, guys, that's pretty much all we've got time for this evening. It goes past really quickly. Janilda, you yeah, were very quiet nice. tonight. It was, yes. Yeah. Well, all the watches are older than Janilda. That's the problem. There's nothing I can talk Gab, about. Gab, I just wanted to say one thing, Paul. I had a call today. A customer called and said, can I have a quick word with Spencer? And his name was Kurt. And obviously, like you, Paul, sometimes I get these calls and think someone's got a problem or not happy. And he said, I just felt that I had to give you a call. He said, last week, Wednesday and Thursday, I spoke with Janilda about a watch. And David served me on Saturday. And he just said, I've got to give a shout out to the way that your staff and how they were, the, the help they gave me and that David gave his time on Saturday. And you know something? You don't often get this. And for someone to call me and, you just know, to say that, that, it was, that nice, yeah. was, you know, and obviously I shared it with the staff. Well, he came recommended by someone we know. Yeah, it was someone terms. he said he'd heard from you. Yeah. But as I say, from... You recommending Paul and how we and he said I've been to ADs I've been to Watchfind I've been to other companies but naming a few and he you know he felt that he wanted to phone to thank us yeah, and Kurt that was really well, absolutely yeah. it really was lovely to have yeah. that before we go I love a challenge pass me the red button please yes. okay here we go guys we've got a big red button here Moshin Khalifa says you missed a huge feature of the flat four any idea what it is. Silence. <laughs> Janilda, any what idea? I, I, I have a perfect excuse. Ask I don't him know what we it is. don't know everything. Right, Mosh and Khalifa, pop in your comments now exactly what we have missed. And we're going to wait now. We're going to keep the, we're going to keep the show open until we get Very an answer. Mind, I can't see anything. <laughs> to be fair, Paul, you can't see a thing. I'm going to rectify that for you. Um, All I can see is like you three guys and me. That's it. Oh, okay. I need uh, I need to have a separate screen up for you somewhere along the yeah. line so you can. Uh, we got an answer. We'll, there. we'll stick that on the Christmas list. Mosh, are you going to stick up an answer for us? Maybe. He's we'll give you a little going. countdown. <laughs> Paul, we're getting to the time of the evening, which every every viewer of this channel loves. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to need to use the button. We that. might need <laughs> to use the buzzer. Ah, so. This is the outro. Oh, he says so. Kelvin O says rehort. Um, the rehort in the flat four. Someone says question mark. Tamil says. Yeah. We're come we're on, Mosh, in come on, spit it out. We can't wait all night. No. He forgot me. If it comes through, we'll see it in the comments yeah, after. We'll talking about uh, the on the non flat yeah. four, where six is, there are three markers. Can you see that, Spence? On the non flat four, where the six so o'clock the is, there are three markers. On the flat four, where six is, there are five markers. Oh, five. Spence is looking. He's checking. I haven't got my eyeglass here, so I couldn't comment at the moment. Can you not I'll see do a that? video on that because there's a long story to that one, but it'd be interesting. Is that you? So that's just something you, you're aware of? I know what of. he's talking about, yeah. I'll do a video on it. Okay, Paul's going to do a, a very special video on that. Guys, if you are enjoying the channel, which it appears all um, all the people on here tonight are, please do like, subscribe, press every single button you can. Uh, Spencer is always ribbing me that Paul has 46 million uh, <laughs> subscribers and we have... We're, catch we're catching him. 1.45. <laughs> it's going to take us about 182 years, but yeah. we will get there. And then James, who sits in the control room, says, yeah, but you're growing 10% a month, 10% a month. But we want to be growing 30% a month, don't we, Spencer? Absolutely. It's all about the numbers. Um, so do press well, the like, so subscribe. Sa saying that, we have been told it's not the quantity, it's the quality. Yeah. Yeah? Paul, we remember that. Yeah. You've been speaking to your mates again about <laughs> presents, haven't you? Of course he yeah. has. Well, he's trying to borrow someone else's car, isn't he? So he's got yeah, to, you exactly. know, he's got to be nice Listen, to everybody. Gavin, after this is finished, it's your birthday. Make sure you get him out and get him to take you somewhere nice. Oh, as sure. long as it's not Pizza Express. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't do Pizza Express again. <laughs> um... Uh, Bob Cop Bob Copley, enjoy the talk about vintage watches tonight. Well done, guys. Spencer, come on. Let's sit back, Janilda, and get ready for oh, Spencer. Ready, everybody. Outro. Get oh, the God. button ready. So, Paul, remember, if you haven't dealt with us yet... Hold He's on. Talking to Paul. Hold on. He's not Why are you talking to Paul? Goodnight. What about everybody? All right, I'll say goodnight to Paul first. I'll say goodnight to Paul first. <laughs> goodnight, Paul. Goodnight, mate. You can Thank have an early well. night. So there's no pressure to get this right. None. Yeah, <laughs> there isn't. We've there got isn't. the button. We've got plenty of weeks ahead of us. Go on. If you don't haven't dealt no. with us yet, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the button. But, but Gav, you do that. Yeah, come me. on, try okay. it. So don't forget to like, subscribe, 
and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> what about YouTube? <laughs> and you, okay, we do YouTube as well. <laughs> if you haven't dealt with us yet, it's only a matter of time. Good night, guys. Good, Good night. night.